It takes 100 days to form a new habit. You had 100 days. Which habit would you want to pick up? A new skill? Something to accelerate your career? What if in those 100 days you dedicated it to learning in a home lab? Do you think you can do it? Do you think you can set aside one hour a day to build, explore, tinker, and learn in your home lab? And what if we all committed to doing this together and held each other accountable? And what if I told you I brought some friends? For my first collaboration ever, I brought 11 of my favorite home labbers and asked them what their favorite part of home labbing is. So if you need some ideas or some motivation for the 100 days of home lab, you want to be sure you stick around and hear what they have to say. So here are the rules to the 100 days of home lab. First, you have to commit to working in your home lab for an hour a day for the next 100 days. This can be anything related to hardware, networking, infrastructure, self-hosting, Docker, Kubernetes, cybersecurity, or anything you can build in your lab. Two, share your progress on socials every day using the 100 days of home lab hashtag. This not only holds you accountable, it helps you find others who are sharing their 100 days of home lab journey. And that's it. Seriously, that's it. And if you're wondering what a home lab is, it can be anything from large enterprise servers to old PCs and laptops and even low powered Raspberry Pis. And I think I know someone who has a few Pis laying around. Not to mention connecting a petabyte of storage to it. I like home labbing because it lets me cosplay as a sysadmin. I got my start uh, in the field as a programmer, and so I haven't really done much with data centers, and so I didn't get to play with racks like this. But originally, I started out in IT working in radio engineering, and I worked on Windows NT servers and client PCs, but I never got to do much uh, kind of data center and networking side things. You know, it's a lot more fun doing this kind of stuff. Also, my kids are growing older, so I get to do even more things like learn about VLANs and port security and things like that. Not only physical security, but also to uh, kind of separate them out from my, my work network here with all the, the petabyte of storage I have sitting on my workbench over there and all the stuff I have in my rack here. You heard Jeff Gearling mention storage and networking as a huge part of home labs and not something you may have access to at work. But that's the nice thing about having a home lab. You get to tinker with things you wouldn't normally get to. It's doing all the stuff that you don't get to do with things that are for real. I mean, if you have stuff in the enterprise and it costs thousands upon thousands of dollars, you don't really get to experiment with it much. But using enterprise grade Optane drives to see if games load faster and getting access to four terabyte SATA hard drives and just messing with all sorts of fun stuff. I mean, home labbing is what it's about. Building building things like the forbidden router, just all sorts of fun stuff. And again, congratulations on 100,000. We get your commemorative WD Blue 500 gigabyte hard drive, which is filled with lots and lots of cryptocurrency that is no longer worth anything. Wendell from Level 1 Text mentioned both networking and storage, which is a big part of having a home lab. So much can be learned in your home without taking down production servers at work which is an important part of home labbing. It provides a safe space for you to explore technologies. Well, I got my start in 1980s on a TRS-80 computer. From there, it's just a love and passion project ever since, and it's trajectory that it took me for my career in tech is all based on my first experiments with this. Come back to 2022 here, there is so much enterprise hardware that you can get your hands on that's no longer fit for the enterprise, but you can build your home lab, you can build experiments, you can get a better understanding of how all these systems integrate, how to set them up, how to configure them. And most importantly, you can do these experiments that allow you to fail in the privacy of your own home and not destroy a production server. Well, unless it's your own, but that's okay because you don't have to tell anyone that you broke it. Those learning opportunities are absolutely what gets me enthusiastic about home lab. It really helps people get a better hands-on understanding of things, whether you're building it with some used enterprise servers or a bunch of Raspberry Pis or whichever single board computer makes you happy. The opportunities are endless. The fun is endless. There's so much to learn. My recommendation for getting started though, because that comes up a lot, is going to be start with a goal. Start with a project you want to host, a software you want to set up, and then everything will kind of fall into place with your goal in mind to what hardware you need to support that goal. Tom brings up a really good point that you want to pick a goal and the rest will fall into place. And I wholeheartedly agree with this. Picking a goal up front will drive many of your hardware and architecture decisions in your lab. But what if you just want to have fun? It's fun. I'm a person who has always been passionate about technology, so much so that every single job that I've held since age 18 has been based in tech from sales to repair to support to full-on network engineering and systems administration. 
There was even a little bit of time spent as a CNC operator there in the middle. I guess you could say I started home labbing all the way back in 2005 with a used HP Presario desktop and a Celeron 2 gigahertz CPU. Believe it or not, one of the first operating systems I set out to learn was this new open source project called FreeNAS. What started out as pure curiosity about how servers run eventually became a tool set for my professional career. Using skills I developed in my home lab, I started my own event photography business and eventually allowed me to advance in my own career. While some people get into home labbing just to run services to make their life more convenient, and that's certainly why I got into it, home labs can be more than just nerdy Lego. They can allow you to try out new networking and server environments, test services you may be tasked to roll out for a client, and can potentially lead to career advancements or other professional opportunities. Besides, it's fun. I totally agree, Jeff. It is fun. It's fun to build. It's fun to tinker. It's even fun to fail. But remember, part of that fun is also learning. It's just so much easier, in my opinion, to learn something when you have your hands on it, when you could see it, when you could touch it. And when it comes to servers, you could simply install whatever it is you're studying at this very moment. If you want a Raspberry Pi powered Kubernetes cluster, well, you can absolutely do that. You can essentially just roll your own enterprise data center right there in your house. You know what? I don't think there's a better way to learn than by having a home lab. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy it quite a bit. And I think you will too. No, I totally agree with Jay. I've never really been the type that learns from books or by lectures. I learn best when I can have my hands on something because doing is how I like to learn. As an IT guy, I'm always interested in learning new technologies. I think that's a pretty important part of being an IT guy, that you have the passion and the drive to always expand your knowledge. And I'm not the one who likes to sit for hours and hours in trainings and courses. I'm more a practical guy, so to speak, and I just like to get my hands on a terminal and simply learn by doing it. That's why I love the home lab so much because it's a perfect playground for me. I can spit up new virtual machines and run Linux and Windows servers and start educating myself in topics that I want to learn. So that's my favorite part about having a home lab. It's a great hobby that not only makes a lot of fun, but also does something useful for my IT career. Christian's right. It is a great hobby and it can definitely contribute to the growth of your IT career. It also lets you explore systems, gadgets, and technologies that aren't always enterprise grade, but can still teach you valuable skills. The thing I love the most about home labbing is the ability to explore Linux phones, to Nook devices, to KVMs down here, and then build obviously your own rack and all those things to kind of jump in and go places I normally wouldn't have gone in my professional career, which is amazing. It's reignited that passion for technologies I've always had. And I always encourage more people to jump in this space because it's just simply amazing. I 100% agree with Chris. It is amazing. It does allow you to explore spaces you might not have been able to explore in your professional career. Or it can simply be a playground to explore. Having the ability to have a playground, a place where I can just go and play with new tools, deploying a cool tool that teaches me about data visualization or how to investigate a cybersecurity investigation, or even a home lab where I can learn detection and attacking. This ability to have a place where I can just play with tools and be able to prove to people and myself that I actually can do it is very, very important for me. I've been able to get jobs and also gain skills that I would never have imagined from just having a home lab. As Howard mentioned, this can open up the doors to new opportunities. But what if you want to do it as a hobby, just to do something different than you do all day at work? My favorite thing about having a home lab is that it's a chance to build something technical in a way that's really just for me. I spend every day working with customers, networks, and code. And it's nice to get to experience infrastructure in a way that's just for me without that pressure. In this way, it reminds me of tending a personal garden. It can certainly be tedious at times, but it can also be deeply rewarding when you get it set up in just the right way. And like a garden, the work never really ends. Veronica has a point there. The work can be never ending because home labs do need care and feeding. But this teaches you a valuable lesson about patching, maintenance, and downtime. But what if you just need to escape? What if you just want to do something totally different than you do for your day job? And home labbing is your way to escape. Well, 
that's okay too. Of course, it's the hardware and the software and the tinkering and all of that stuff that my brain needs to thrive, but I get to be part of a community of people who want to help each other achieve uh, common goals of self-hosting and, and tinkering and labbing and those sorts of things. And it's a very cool experience to share wins and losses and experiences with so many people literally around the world. David's right. There's a huge community of people, not only on YouTube, but on Reddit, Discord, Instagram, Twitter, and even in real life, <laughs> in your own city. People who are passionate about the same thing. Isn't that right, Ray Al? What is my favorite part about home labbing? It's gotta be the chicks. Okay, on a real note, my favorite part about home labbing isn't even a technical thing. It's the thing that I was honestly most nervous about when I was getting into it, and it's the community. No matter who you are, where you are in the world, what your experience is with home labbing, there's always gonna be an accepting community there to help you along with your home labbing path. And I'm honestly super appreciative of that because I'm not an expert. I'm just a dude with a camera. Ray Dowell is exactly right. Well, besides the first thing he said, but a community of people I've met over the years has absolutely been the best part of having a home lab. Something I didn't know exist until I started one myself. So I encourage you to start your own journey on 100 days of home lab. Pick a goal, drive to that goal, and share along the way. To everyone that's watching, thank you so much for allowing me into your community. I've been able to learn from so many of you out there. And a huge, huge thank you to Jeff Geerling, Wendell from Level 1 Techs, Jeff from Craft Computing, Tom Lawrence from Lawrence Systems, Jay from Learn Linux TV, Chris from Chris Titus Tech, Christian from The Digital Life, David from DB Tech, Howard from IT Security Labs, Ray Dowell, and last but not least, Veronica from Veronica Explains. Thank you all so much for helping me celebrate my 100K sub video and by giving back to the community. These folks are a testament to how supportive the home lab community is. And a huge thank you to everyone who's been watching and subscribing over the last 100,000 subs. Here's to the next 100,000 subs. Thank you. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Well, congratulations on 100,000 Techno Tim. As one door closes, another opens up. You've got enough subs, you can do even more videos on Jekyll, and Jenkins, and Kubernetes, and GetOps, and deploying code, and <sighs> I know some people that can't even use Composer right to just install a simple Drupal website. How is this possible? But I wanted to say congratulations on 100,000 subscribers, Techno Tim, and look forward to seeing what you do in the future. Congrats to 100K, Tim. I'm glad you're a part of the Home Lab community, and I look forward to the next 100K. For all of you out there that have helped me along my journey, along with you, Mr. Techno Tim, I appreciate it. 100,000 subscribers, well deserved, my man. Keep it up. Congratulations to Techno Tim on reaching 100,000 subs. It's quite the achievement. Thank you, Tim, for letting me be part of your celebration of hitting 100,000 subscribers. Man, I've watched your channel blow up over the last couple of years, and this is totally deserved for you. Uh, you've, you've been putting out great content, and well done. Keep doing what you're doing. Congratulations. I'm Wendell, and uh, yeah.